Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. We've got Dr. Normal behind the desk, and tonight we're talking about foodgeeks.com with Ryan Snyder and Crystal Beasley. Later on in the episode, we're going to have Nate De Niro join us, but right now, let's find out from Ryan what Food Geeks is, because it's 10 years old and it's got a new life right now. <laughs> it is 10 years old. Um, uh, food Geeks is a recipe sharing website. Um, mm -hmm. It's designed to let people geek out about food and help each other come, become better chefs. Um, so, yeah, it's it's ten years old and it's and it and it has a new life now. It's so it's what pretty crazy. What happened? Because it kind of died, right? Yeah, it kind of it kind of bit the dust. Um, it suffered a hard disk corruption, <laughs> and and that essentially means, means that most of the files <laughs> that uh, that were used to run Food Geeks just kind of disappeared, mm -hmm. essentially. So. Um, that happened on September 28th at about 7:42 in the morning, and not a nice thing to wake up to. No, um, it was it was um, Food Geeks was in a really good spot because it was just running on its own. It was doing a really great job. I didn't really have to touch it ever. It just kind of it worked, um, and then all of a sudden it didn't. And uh, Thanksgiving was coming up shortly, and yeah. I knew that I had to just really work hard to get it back up and running. All of the um, backups were corrupted as well, so I didn't really have anything to go off of. And that meant that I had essentially 35 days to write a website from scratch and get it up and running and, and looking all purdy. This and is the first time you've built something from in 35 days, though? I mean, um, and it took less than that. Yeah, so... Um, uh, so I've been working on rapid development with, um, uh, with, uh, uh, Mozilla. I've, I've been doing a couple of sites with mm -hmm. Mozilla, um, based on, under rapid development principles. And, um, so I just kind of took some of the techniques that I've been working on and fine tuning, uh, with Mozilla and, and applied it to food geeks. So, mm -hmm. um, so it, it just worked somehow. <laughs> so basically it's a social networking site with recipes instead of like you're not shouting at people you're not posting how your family is you're putting up recipes and sharing them but you've got friends lists yeah exactly yeah. um so um we've been re working really hard on activity streams and integrating activity streams into the site um and what that will allow you to do is to see what all of your friends are doing at any given time so that you can see that uh, uh that joe added a recipe and mm -hmm. and and barb added a picture for uh, uh for for a, a cake um and you can see all that in in real time and it, it allows you to um keep in touch with the people who you know their taste buds already you know yeah. what restaurants they like to go to um so it's or you've it's eaten at their more, house or yes exactly and so it's a, a more familiar um food experience mm -hmm. than uh reading a yelp review or um uh seeing someone's an, uh, an, an anonymous person uh, their recipe on on another uh, recipe website so let's go back we're going to come back to the present in a moment sure, but sure. let's go back 10 years yeah and what possessed you 10 years ago? I, I, a little bit of background. You're a sommelier. Or were. Or have that <laughs> I, in I have your background. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and so you're obviously a wine guy. and But you're a foodie as well. Mm -hmm. What prompted you to start this site 10 years ago? Well, I was, I was cooking a lot 10 years ago. Um, mainly uh, just baking a lot of bread. Mm -hmm. um, Is that how it starts? Because... <laughs> I've yeah. become a bread baking junkie lately. <laughs> yeah. All right. That, that's kind of, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of where it started for me. Um, I sold my previous business, um, cramsession.com, mm -hmm. and I just needed something to do. Um, I was inspired both by, um, I, I suppose, number one, I was really tired of looking through cookbooks for ideas, yeah. and I wanted to be able to um, to have a place where I could store my recipes easier, and also to be able to find other people's recipes, to, to sift through and search a lot quicker. Um, and the second um, impetus was um, NCR, the cash register company, mm -hmm. created a prototype of a, um, what they called the microwave bank, and it was a microwave with a touch screen on it. And it would... <laughs> The, the whole premise was that you could do your banking from a microwave touchscreen in your kitchen. Like okay. anyone would do that. But, yeah. you know, that but was the But you could if you wanted to. Exactly. All right. And so um, I just kind of recognized that that was probably going to happen 
with refrigerators mm -hmm. eventually. And so I wanted to, um, to start creating something that could integrate with uh, and become a focal point of, of the kitchen and allow you to uh, do a little bit more um, intelligent things with recipes. How fancy is your refrigerator? <laughs> I don't have a touch screen on it right now. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. In the future, perhaps. All right, so back to now. Mm -hmm. It died. It did. Its files were corrupted. <laughs> it's very sad. Right. Take us from the crap <laughs> it's dead to the launch because it was launched in plenty of time for Halloween or for Thanksgiving, excuse mm -hmm. me, not Halloween. Yeah, so... Um, so the first thing that I did was just take a step back and think about it for a sec. Mm -hmm. um, I let it be down for for about maybe about 16 hours or so. Or, or so. I yeah. promised my sweetie I was going to take her shopping that day, and that was that was the priority that day. Um, so the whole time we were shopping, I was thinking, <laughs> just turning it over in your head, yeah, and trying to figure out exactly what I would be able to do, how I could accomplish getting the site up as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I started development that night as soon as I got home and just didn't stop for for 34 days. Um, I in, invited Crystal here, um, who is a, a, a snazzy designer. Um, she is. <laughs> uh, out to, um, we went to Broder, I believe. We for, went to Broder. Uh, for brunch. And um, it, that's a, a little Swedish joint uh, here in town and had, mm -hmm. a, had a great brunch and started talking about just what Food Geeks was and um, asked her to give me a hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, she agreed. And it, uh, um, having her on there allowed me to, uh, to focus solely on the, the tech pieces and just let her work her design magic uh, with, with the branding and with a lot of the um, experiential parts of the site. So I've got one more question for you before I'm going to move over to Crystal. How many users did you have before it keeled and how many do you have now? Um, let's see. We had about 22,500 users. Oh. Um, and fortunately the database is still intact. So all the recipes and all of the, the user accounts, all that information was saved. It was on a separate part of the hard drive. Good. Thankfully. Um, and so we've picked up a, another, um, I, I think maybe just 150 or 200 users, um, uh, since then. So, okay. um, so it was, it was a, a decent recovery. Good. All right, Crystal, you sat down at brunch. What'd you eat? I believe... I had the Broder board. Mm -hmm. Or did you have the Broder board? I had the Broder you board. You had the Broder board, yeah. which is yogurt and blueberries mm -hmm. and smoked trout mm -hmm. and toast That's points. So <laughs> and I think I had the breakfast sandwich. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> I had the breakfast sandwich, which is sort of an unassuming choice, but it's much more delicious than you would think by the name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when when Ryan kind of pitched you on the topic of food geeks, tell me how it went. What what were your thoughts and what led you to? I love the new design. It looks fantastic. Thank you. What got you here? Well, I don't think Ryan quite knew what I did. <laughs> 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 I got an email that said, hey, let's let's brainstorm. And I said, great, let's go to Broder. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we had breakfast, and he told me the story about the site crashing. And, of course, I love cooking, and my grandmother taught me to cook from the time. I, I can't remember not knowing how to cook. <laughs> so... It's, it's a southern thing. It's a southern thing, yeah. <laughs> so uh, cooking is a subject near and dear to my heart, and we've always had a good friendship, so it seemed like it would be a natural thing to work together. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, we were just working. That day turned into about a six-hour work session. Mm -hmm. We ended up wireframing out, not wireframing, but... Uh, figuring out the beginnings of the flow of the whole site and trying to decide what pages we needed and what sort of functionality. We had paper duct tape all over the walls with yes. just scribbles here and there. You need a big whiteboard. We, we sort <laughs> of Saiyan. made a giant whiteboard out of 
newsprint and mm -hmm. Sharpies mm -hmm. and just started the process of figuring out what functionality was important and what we wanted to do on each page and what the goals of the site were. Mm -hmm. And what got it to what it is now? Well, we had, um, we had a list of goals that we wanted to accomplish and there were a lot of things that we were adding functionality from the last iteration so of Food Geeks. What are a few of the new functionalities that you have? All of the social features are okay. new. Mm -hmm. So being able to fan people, um, being able to see what the activity stream is, all of that is completely new functionality mm -hmm. from the last site. And the other aspect that's new is the ability to earn a badge for... I got my first badge today. <laughs> yes, you did. It's a newbie badge, but still, whatever. <laughs> Isn't it a cute newbie it's badge? It's so cute. It's I was a like, chick? I was like, what is... Oh, I got a it's, badge. <laughs> it's an adorable badge. It is very cute. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's very, very cute. Yeah, I was very excited. I was like, oh my God, I'm special. <laughs> a badge. Yeah, and, and the was, idea behind the badges is that um, you'll be encouraged to try new things, mm -hmm. uh, try new recipes. Um, the more that you cook, the more that you contribute to the website, the more badges that you'll earn. So if I put my mashed potatoes up there, as apparently I promised I would do, <laughs> they're vegan. My mashed potatoes are vegan, which mm -hmm. I cannot wow. say about most of my food. <laughs> Sadly. Mm -hmm. And it's also, <laughs> badges are also to encourage uh, people to express their interest in a mm -hmm. specific sort of thing. So mm -hmm. there are people that are very much into chili. Mm -hmm. So if you post several chili recipes, then you'll get the Chili Master Badge. And when you get the Chili Master Badge, then you get an email saying, you're a Chili Master. Yay. And you can click on that page and it'll show you what a Chili Master is. And mm -hmm. it will also show you the last few people to earn that badge in the hopes that you will click on those people that have similar interests and then you will be able to look at their recipes as well. So you're Connect able to tag back. the recipes, so to speak, mm -hmm. and and in that way find similarities between I mean, threads of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're using tags for um, in order to cate ca categorize, categorize recipes, exactly. Yeah. Um, in the old days, I hand edited and hand categorized every single recipe. So the first 10,000 recipes Brian. that came through the site. <laughs> it's a lot of work, yeah. man. <laughs> so um, so uh, one of the things that I was really working on was how to alleviate me from editorial burdens mm -hmm. and, and allow me to focus on the technical piece of the site. Um, that way I could implement technical items and new technologies uh, much quicker. Mm -hmm. So I have to say that having had you on my show, this is the second time, but also having had you on the show at a conference and talking to you on several occasions until the relaunch of Food Geeks, no idea that you had Food Geeks. <laughs> I was completely clueless. I was like, what? It didn't surprise me because I knew that you appreciated food and wine, mm -hmm. but I was still like, no, <laughs> Ryan has that? Doesn't he have enough on his plate? <laughs> Isn't he busy enough? Yeah, Food Geeks has been just that that part of me that it's is so ingrained that I I almost forget about it because mm -hmm. it's just something that I, I would just do ten minutes every morning and and then would walk away yeah. essentially and, and go about the rest of my to go go to the eight eight to five job. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you to Rick because he had the big post about it and then yeah. I went poaching. I was like, <laughs> Oh look, Rick's talking about it. I should talk to Ryan. <laughs> Get food geeks on my show. That's a good, good, good idea. All right, so we're going to take a, a break for a moment here because we're going to actually switch Crystal out with another person who's been instrumental mm -hmm. in the relaunch of Food Geeks. But don't worry, we'll have Crystal back in after hours. I know you guys are all charmed by her. Um, so if you give us just one moment, we'll be back with Nate De Niro and Ryan. So we're back. 
still with Ryan, and we also have Nate Nier now. So, Ryan, you brought Nate in when? Um, I brought in Nate uh, probably um, uh, about two-thirds of the way through Food Geeks development. Um, we got talking about roasting turkeys mm. um, down at the uh, of things turkey. yeah down at the Davis Street Tavern. So it uh, it kind of started out with food talk, and um, I started remembering a lot of the things that uh, that Nate was skilled in. And um, as we were talking, I was really thinking about food geeks and mm-hmm. and what uh, you know if we might be able to um, uh, bring Nate in to to do a little um, help here. So. Um, so yeah, so Nate, uh, Nate kind of came in and started working on, um, on, on PR and SEO and social media aspects of the site, mm-hmm. um, and worked really hard to get the blog up and running and, and, uh, and, and working really well. So, um, yeah. It's a, we have a very small community and speaking from experience, Nate's the kind of guy that you want to pull in on stuff because he does a great job. So when I'm a team player. You are. You're a good guy and a team player, and you seem to lend your best to everything that you work on. I try to. That's my emotional moment of the evening, it's ladies great. and gentlemen. So when you got pulled into Food Geeks? When I got pulled in, I was psyched. I mean, I love food. I know you do. Love food. You and I have had more I mean, than can't one you meal tell? together. <laughs> I, love, I love me some food, and uh, Ryan and I, you know, we definitely see eye to eye on, mm-hmm. on the whole hedonism thing i would say in a way i mean there's a hedonistic <laughs> aspect to to food and libations and stuff like Very that much. so um and you know i certainly something i could definitely put my put my effort behind as well i mean mm-hmm. crystal's awesome uh the design of the site is awesome i mean i kind of knew ryan was doing this before you know a bunch of the different sites so um i kind of had an inkling but not really you know until the crash boom um, <laughs> which actually is kind of fortuitous that it, that you, it happened yeah. <laughs> well yeah well I mean, no not, for you not too because i mean the site's been completely updated and redesigned yeah and that is a positive thing aspects to it it has huge. a new life people like the social aspects yeah. of things well and that's the thing i mean it was doing it's it's you know it's got a genuine user base i mean it was doing mm-hmm. well before um you know, before before the crash. So now, again, let, you know, bringing the new life in, adding the social features. I mean, that's that's huge. It's um, you know, there's a lot of things going on on the web with recipes and, mm-hmm. and food sites and things like that. Um, it already. seems like the food community has really. I mean, different communities cope in different ways, but it really does seem like the food community has bonded with the tech community in a very significant kind of way. Yeah, there's been, a, I mean, there was even that whole period, and I think it's still kind of going where, you know, the chefs are getting like, you know, super technical with phones and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, novel ingredients and things like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I know a lot of tech people that that's Hobbies. their hobby mm-hmm. is, yeah. is to come home and the only way to let go of your the mathematical side of your brain brain is to be creative Mm -hmm. and so what better way than to be creative by by making something that fills your belly so what is your favorite meal to cook not to eat to cook Uh, my favorite meal to cook um puerco pibil it's a slow roasted uh, Mexican pork that's wrapped in banana leaves um and I I cook that uh, every February Every February for Valentine's? Um, no? No, just, just every, fe- every fe- February. Why February? Um, what better time of the month to have a warm, Fair. slow roasted pork? Fair. Yeah. What's your favorite mm. meal to cook? Well, it's definitely got pork in it. Definitely got pork in it. <laughs> um, it there's a spicy hot tomato oil mm-hmm. that uh, is, is very simple, but it's mm, sublime. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, Dr. Norm, was your favorite meal to make paella? No? What's your favorite meal to make? Because it's my favorite meal that you make for me. I'm just saying. I like the red sauce. Oh, you like to make that. He makes an amazing <laughs> red sauce. That's not really a meal. Does it it's, have a pork in it? it's a staple. It's a staple. I, I, we have this Big giant, food. it's actually advertised as a menudo pot. It's this humongous pot. <laughs> and I make him make these like huge batches of red sauce for me. So that I can store them in the freezer because we make pizza at home. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and I make a, a like a tomato soup. 
mm-hmm. from the base of his mm-hmm. red sauce and then you one pasta my... and dip the bread in it. <laughs> Damn, I love red sauce. One of my favorite things in the fall is uh, I have some friends back at home that would can tomatoes mm-hmm. in the fall. And we would can like 25 or 30 bushels in a weekend. Mm-hmm. How big is a bushel? Is that, a, is that a, like a oh. official measurement? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on the fruit that's in there. But I mean, it's like... Actually, we had a bushel basket up on the site um, mm-hmm. before, but I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a, it's like a it's like a box of paper, okay, or a file oh, box, like a ream. It's about one and a half mm-hmm. of those, probably, okay. of tomatoes. Okay. But that's a lot of tomatoes to it's can, a lot of like tomatoes. eight or nine hundred yeah, quarts of can uh, you know, tomatoes in a week. Having having picked uh, grapes for wine, mm-hmm. I, I'm familiar with large quantities of. <laughs> well, and it made the best. <laughs> tomato sauce yeah. because it was just the base right yeah. it was the tomatoes the crushed tomatoes and basil mm-hmm. and we had the secret was we do you put th- the basil in there too well that's what we would do we oh, wouldn't so actually yeah. cook this we so you could actually cook the sauce yeah. and can it or you can just put the raw crushed tomato in mm-hmm. i would prefer to take the raw crushed tomato and make the, the raw crush <laughs> with a little sprig of basil mm-hmm. and in a three base steamer which allowed us to do like 95 quarts nice mm. and uh yeah so stuff like that like being able to do that with a bunch of people we have wine Mm -hmm. and oily cheeses and meats that sweat and bread and all that sort of family time it was very familial yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's good and that's why i mean that's why part of the reason why i love food yeah i know that about you (laughs) traveling too like eating my way through places yeah yeah Yeah. and i go what are your least favorite meals to make or least favorite items to make that you have to make but that is like oh god not again. Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't really know that I make anything that There's I nothing that tedious. I feel obligated mm. to make. Um, I only make things that I want. <laughs> See, I come at this from a, as a parent. My daughter wants me to make sugar cookies, mm-hmm. and I hate making sugar cookies. Like, really, I hate making the sugar cookies. Well, what about the joy it brings to your daughter? I hate making sugar cookies. <laughs> I like to make chocolate chip cookies. Okay. I hate sugar cookies. I don't like them because I don't like to eat them. Mm. So, whatever. Yeah, no. But other than that, I really enjoy cooking and baking. And I'm new to the world of bread making. Mm. Mm. And, yeah. I've always cooked, but I've never been a baker until very recently. <laughs> so, you, neither of you can identify your least favorite thing to make? I wish I could. No. I just can't. Let me just skinny? How about clean up? What's your least favorite thing to make? Dishes. Cleaning up. Cleaning up. <laughs> What's your most favorite dish? That's a good answer. To make, not to eat. She's contemplating. For me. <laughs> <laughs> rhubarb pie for my sweetie. Rhubarb pie Keep for her up sweetie. Rhubarb, hmm. a rhubarb pie. I don't make I don't make pie crusts. Are you guys pie I watched the pie crust tutorial on the oh, website. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Do either of you make pie crust? Mm-hmm. I'm not a baker. You're not a baker either. Though I aspire to be one. Pie crust scares me. I made a I made a graham cracker crust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was convinced I was screwing it up. <laughs> I made two because I thought the first one came out messed up. It didn't. It was fine. Mm-hmm. I have to make a pie crust for in order to make my mother's Dutch apple pie, mm-hmm. which is the only thing that I really request every time that I go back home, back mm-hmm. to Ohio to visit my family. Uh, so I have to kind of get my fix when yeah. <laughs> she's not around. So, yeah, I do have to roll out a pie crust every now and again. Yeah. What's your favorite, what's your favorite food that effort goes into? Like, you know what I mean? There's, there's like something it takes you 10 minutes to cook up in the kitchen, but what's your favorite meal that it, it's an hour of prep and then you have to cook it? Like, I love risotto, but my arm fell, almost fell off the first time I made it. I love making lasagna. Lasagna. Mm-hmm. And it's it's always a process, going mm-hmm. to get all the ingredients and, uh, you know, making sure you go to Pasta Works to get the, the fresh pasta, pasta sheets. Yep. Um, the process of, of, of making the sauce with the, the pancetta and the uh, Italian sausage and the roasted red peppers uh, with, with the tomatoes as well. Um, and, and then, of course, assembling it all and baking it in the oven and having people walk in the door to that aroma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably anything, um, especially extreme with meat. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
that's actually one of the, the <laughs> things that we got talking about was mm -hmm. the whole trash can method of cooking turkeys and yeah. rib roasts. And mm -hmm. I, I did a rib roast uh, this past Christmas that was completely wrapped in bacon. Mm -hmm. I think, um, no, were, were there pictures of that? Oh, or yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think I saw them. <laughs> I think I like saw that. them. Yeah. I was, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, did I imagine that? They're on and Flickr. Salve? No, it looked like a spaceship. Yeah, <laughs> Or like I a bacon-wrapped skull. My favorite labor-intensive food is gumbo. I like to make mm, gumbo. gumbo. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we've got a few minutes left, and in that time, I want to talk to Ryan about a sibling project. Yes. Uh, WineGeeks.com. <laughs> WineGeeks. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, now that Food Geeks has been relaunched and mm -hmm. is on a, a new platform, WineGeeks also has to be rebuilt and relaunched on the same platform. Uh, if you have a, a user account on on one side, it's going to work on the other side. Okay. So I'm working um, madly in my uh, minimal free time at the moment to get Wine Geeks back up and running. Um, so I'm trying to make that a 30 day project as well, and days. and oh. hope to uh, <laughs> to get that off the ground here um, uh, here in about uh, 10 or 11 days from now. So um, so it's been it's been a rough couple months, but. Uh, but hopefully we can enjoy the, the fruits of these labors. <laughs> so in theory, WineGeeks.com will be up and running by 30-hour um, day. Yeah, that's the goal. So mm -hmm. if you don't know what 30-hour day is, I'm not even going to explain it to you. Just go to 30hourday.org. Rick, <laughs> Rick and Trozzi and I are a little, a little bit loopy. <laughs> but the important thing that I should note is that Ryan is going to be uh, one of our guests on 30 Hour Day, and he's going to be hosting a food tasting and a wine tasting and talking about all things food and wine related for uh, a while on Saturday evening. We're going to geek out a little bit. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. And Me it's going to be kind of close to the end. So we will be hungry, is it really? thirsty, <laughs> and and insane. <laughs> that sounds like it'll be a good time. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> so... Nate? You can send it out properly. Yeah, no, it's going to be a good send. I think we're at three hours, four hours from the end. I can't Something remember like these. I'm not looking at the schedule. <laughs> it would be great if I had access to those things when I was on the show, but I don't. So are there any parting thoughts that you want to share about food geeks or wine geeks? Um, I think uh, I think the main thing that I'd, I'd like to say is you know this is this has been a lot of fun. It's been it's been tough to do the development that quickly, mm -hmm. um, but I'm really looking forward to the space afterwards where I get to uh, to look at how to expand them and make them a little bit more intelligent, make them easier to use, yeah. um, and to help integrate the two together so that food geeks and wine geeks. Uh, so that recipes can relate to wine reviews, et cetera, back and forth. That's what I was wondering is if there would be like a, a pairing. We might have something link. like that up our sleeves yeah. in the future. So, right. um, so that's one thing that we can expect. Um, another thing is um, that recipes are going to be smarter. So they'll be uh, scalable. You can, uh, we'll be able to convert them from imperial to metric measurements, et cetera. So there's a lot of fun stuff coming down the road once they get the time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> once, yeah, once there's time. <laughs> it's the way it always is here in Portland. Once we have time from our many other projects. Mm -hmm. Well, Ryan, Nate, Crystal, thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Kim. Um, they're going to be back, all of them, with us in After Hours in just a few moments. But next week, we're going to be talking to Dane from Simler, and I hope that you guys will join us for that. And I hope that you can go and log on, sign up at foodgeeks.com, because if you need some holiday recipes, it's a good place to check out. <laughs>